at the appointed time, everyone according to his order. So what you should do is to concentrate on your faith and let the Lord arise in your life. Praise God. So as it sounds, we are being cut off. It's an ascension. Ascension from the lower realms of death. Ascension from a lower consciousness, a material consciousness. Consciousness of ourselves as beings, lower beings apart from God. It's an ascension back into that consciousness we lost in Adam, in the transgression of Adam. And like I've explained, that consciousness is I and the Father are one. We are being caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds, to be with the Lord forever. It's not a physical cloud. Brethren, if you go up there in the sky and touch and look for those clouds, you will not find the Lord there. These are spiritual events that occur. Amen. Hallelujah. Every child of God has to, you know, you know, to go back to glory, there has to be an ascension. We must all ascend to meet the Lord in the air. This should be the hope of our calling. This should be what we wait for day and night. Amen. This is what we should hope for, pray in day and night, wait in day and night. Hallelujah. That we experience this ascension, this resurrection, this lifting up. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul will say, Father, I pray, brethren, he was always that I may be found in him. I've left all things that I may be found in Christ, that I may be a partaker of the resurrection from the dead, that I may partake of the power of the resurrection, oh hallelujah, that I may taste of it, oh hallelujah. Because when you are in him, oh hallelujah, you live in the abundance of God's blessings. Oh, hallelujah. You live in a realm where the causes of this world fail to exist. A realm of perfection. A realm of completeness. Oh, hallelujah. God is righteous. Hallelujah. I just pray God will give us this revelation of what He's saying in this hour. Hallelujah. That our inheritance is in Christ Jesus, who is one with God. That our inheritance is in reality is in God. And everything that is the fathers he has given to us who are who forsake the vanities of our lives in this earth to unite with him. Hallelujah. Wherever you see clouds in the Bible, generally speaking, clouds talk about the glory of God. Amen. It talks about the glory of God. And I'm a, you know, you know, that which we inherit in Christ Jesus is the glory of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, but in Christ Jesus, this is reversed. Hallelujah. We have to seek that glory which is from above. Jesus Christ himself descended from heaven. He found himself in the form of a man. He tested the limitedness of man. He descended to the lower parts of earth and he, he knows what it means to have put on the consciousness of man, which is actually a consciousness that breeds torment. Men are actually languishing in hell without knowing it. They are languishing and perishing daily in hell because they are cut off from, in their minds from the source of their life. But Jesus Christ says, Father, glorify me. Glorify me with the glory I had with you before this world was. Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before this world was. Meaning, glorify me, return me to my original state, the state I was with in, I was in when I was with you, before I found myself in material consciousness as a man of the dust. I go to the Father. You see it? Jesus to have that hope and we who have that hope have to follow that same path of Jesus. That is why after the ministry of Jesus, the Bible says he was received up into a cloud. You see, God gave us that view to understand the path that we all take into glory. 
it does not mean that we are going to be taken up to a glory, a physical cloud someday. Praise God. It does not mean that that same physical cloud will come down someday again. No. God opened our eyes to see that sort of thing, to give us an idea of what occurs in the spirit. Praise God. The things of God are spirit. The things that are real are spirit. Praise God. Even if we have known Jesus Christ after the flesh, we know him no more after the flesh, but after the spirit. Praise God. Stop looking out for the flesh body of Jesus. Stop looking out for Jesus to appear in the sky. He's already there present. He's already present. Amen. We have to now awaken to realize it. We have to now awaken in Him. Ascend from our beds in hell and arise to meet the Lord in the air. Unite with Him in that cloud, in that glory cloud. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you notice that whatever God manifested Himself in the past, the Bible says, he never, he never, you know, always records that he appears normally with clouds. Clouds. Praise God. We are going to look at certain instances here. You will see that whatever these clouds are, God is always present. And whatever God is present, these clouds are always present. You see, God actually is spirit and God does not. You see, those those these scenes we're about to express uh, or we're about to talk about here are simply allegories for us to understand. Bear in mind that the invisible things of God are being understood today by the things that are seen. That is why Jesus Christ will normally speak in parables. He speaks in parables so that he uses the elements of this world which we as men have been used to. To explain the invisible, the real realm of God. Praise God. So what you see, what we are going to see, look at now are parables, are your know, allegories that, by the Spirit of God, we begin to understand the things of God. When God appeared to the children of Israel upon Mount Sinai, this was his first appearance ever before a nation, a whole nation. Let us see the interesting manifestation he made. Because the appearance of God upon Mount Sinai before the children of Israel is very prophetic. You will discover that this is nothing but the channel of Mount Zion, where our hope lies. See, Mount Sinai is a shadow of Mount Zion. Of course, we know Mount Zion that we seek is not a physical mountain. It is a spiritual mountain. So, but like, like I was saying, allegories like this cause us to understand the deep things of God. Exodus chapter 19, verse 9, he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak unto thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto the Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the, th the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye, ye go not up into the mountain, nor touch the border of it. However, whosoever touches the mountain shall be surely put to death. Hallelujah. Then there shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, hallelujah, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, mark that the trumpet, they shall come up, up to the mount, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people.